this. Hallelujah. Indeed, hallelujah. Let's uh, give the Lord a resounding clap offering for He deserved for the life of all these uh, young children. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to His name. Um, uh, once again, good and blessed afternoon. I just want to extend the... Uh, the invitation to all of us um, uh, this afternoon or after the service um, the church is heading to uh, we book uh, one of the local restaurant in town so um, uh, you are more than welcome to uh, come and join us um, yeah uh, because of um, the constraint in time normally we would have uh, brought something in here but because the place is being used later on so we um, uh, we just want to um, uh, make it extra special um, uh, because uh, one of our family member are going to the Philippines for a Christmas in New Year holiday so uh, we wouldn't be spending uh, a Christmas in New Year with them but we know that in the spirit we will all be one. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, let's set that aside and let's concentrate in the Word of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Um, uh, can I invite each and everyone to stand up? Because uh, indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, no? Coming here this afternoon or we wait for Sunday to come all the week, Three, six days um, a week, we are at work. We are doing a lot of uh, things. And um, I know that it's not only me, but all of us are excited. We can't wait for Sunday to come. Amen. Amen. Now that we are here, what's stopping us to give everything to the Lord? Amen. What's stopping us to give everything to the Lord? God, can you please come and uh, do that... Um, Oh, come, let us adore the Lord. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. No, just the, ano, just the, oh, come, let us adore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, people of God. We came here to adore the Lord. Amen? What's stopping us? What's stopping us in adoring the Lord? Come on, church, let us adore the Lord in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore him oh come let us adore him Christ the Lord come on one more Lord I pray by your spirit to fall down upon your people Father Lord passion lift up their heart in you through worship give them the gift the desire the passion to worship you to praise you father because like what you have said this is the reasonable task work ministry that you have called us for to worship you oh god so father we pray by faith ignite that fashion in your people to worship you to honor you as you desire deserve according to king david you know my dear brothers and sisters 
I, I wouldn't mind misinterpreted, King David says. My brothers and sisters, I wouldn't mind becoming undignified in your eyes. If in that way, I can worship the Lord. I can honor the Lord. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Yes, Father God, whether we eat or we drink or whatever it is that we will do, we will do it in a manner of adoration to you. We thank you so much, Lord, for your great love, for your presence and your company. Father God, we pray that even as we study your words, may you re be revealed to us, O God, in a brand new way and a fresh new revelation that we have never seen before. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. What enables us to do what we do for the Lord? What enables us? Who is He that enables us to do everything that we do to the Lord? In John chapter 7, verses 38 to 39, the Lord Jesus Christ says, Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Holy Spirit, whom those who believe in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit has not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So Jesus Christ promised to everyone who will call on him, to everyone who would believe in him, that they would be given this river of living water that will flow from within them. In this, he say that this is the Holy Spirit. Amen, church? Amen. This is the Holy Spirit. And in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 4 to 5, when he was about to leave them, when he already been crucified, died, was buried, and resurrected after third day. And according to the scriptures, after resurrection, my dear brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus Christ walked with the believers for 40 days before He was taken back again to heaven. And before He was taken to heaven, Jesus Christ told the believers, he commanded them, saying, Do not leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which He said, You heard it from Me, for John baptizes with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Amen. So the first passage that we have read, Jesus Christ promised and introduced the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus Christ, before leaving, He said, you know, it is in your benefit that I will go away. Because if I will not go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. So it is in your benefit that I go away so that when I go away, the Father can send the Holy Spirit. That's what I have promised you. So Jesus said, do not leave Jerusalem. As I leave, as I depart, 
Anytime soon, Jesus said, don't be scattered, don't be scrambled, do not leave Jerusalem, remain in the city and wait for the promise, Holy Spirit, that the Father has promised about, which you have heard me talk about. Amen, church? And lo and behold, after 10 days, in the time of Pentecost, you know the word Pentecost, Penta, 50 days. So after 10 days, lo and behold, the Holy Spirit came. Amen, church. In Ephesians chapter 13, verse 14, it says in here, In Him, meaning in Christ, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believe in Him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. To the praise of His glory. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, it says in here that God anointed us and set His seal of ownership in us and put His Spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Amen, church. So really, to sum it up, my dear brothers and sisters, all those four passages that we have read, just really for us to come into agreement of who we are now, to come into agreement of our identity in Christ. Amen? So now, basing on those four scriptures that we have read, I want us all to agree. Amen? I want us to agree that all who truly welcomed the Word of God and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior according to the Scriptures has received the Holy Spirit in them. Agree? Amen? That's what those four verses was about. That those who believe in Christ, those who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ according to the scriptures, those who accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit come to them. Amen. Do we agree on that? That all true Christians and true believers in Christ have received the Holy Spirit as mark of ownership. Amen? Ownership by the Lord. And has received the Holy Spirit as a seal of guarantee of our inheritance. Eternal life, everlasting life. Amen? Are we in agreement with that? Amen, Amen church. So here, when the son of perdition will be revealed, and the end times, any moment soon, when the son of lawlessness will come. And you know what they will do? Revelation said that people will be given the mark of the beast to symbolize ownership of the beast. But Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters, is the seal of ownership by the Father. Amen, church? Amen. So all of us who receive the Holy Spirit, I for, God forbid, that we will not reach that time. God forbid that before that ceiling comes, that we are up. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So we all bear the seal of ownership. Amen, church. Amen. I would like to believe that no one is playing games in here. Amen. Amen. I would like to believe that no one is playing church. Amen. I would like to believe that we all accepted the Lord Jesus Christ according to the scripture. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Our message last week, Colossians chapter 3, 
says in there, now that we are already saved, Galatians 2.20, now that it is no longer us that live, but the reason in crucified, in reason Christ live in us, it says in here that the life that we now live in the flesh, we ought to live for Christ. Amen, church? And what was Colossians chapter 3, our message last time? We who are now Christians, we who are now believers, and now we agree that we who now receive the Holy Spirit of God, it says in there, put to death our former self. Put to death our former sinful and carnal nature self and put on the new self. Amen, church? Put on the new self. Let us walk with the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit that is in us. Amen, church? It is not other spirit. It's not worldly spirit. But it's the Holy Spirit. So therefore, let us walk in the newness of life. In the step of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church? Galatians chapter 5, explain it deeper, my dear brothers and sisters, that are we to continue sinning so that grace will increase? No! It says in there, Amen, church? We should not in Galatians chapter 5, it enumerates all and everything in there that, uh, that we used to have. Our sins, our nature, our personality, our traits, it's all enumerated in there. In Galatians chapter 5 said that, do not live in them any longer. Because it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Freedom from all these things. How can you live in them any longer? Amen? Amen. But Jesus, the Galatians said that walk in the manner of the Holy Spirit. Amen? You know, if you read Galatians chapter 5, there's a lot of those negative traits in there. That Galatians wants us to get rid. And he only, he gave us nine to cloth on instead. Amen, church. And this is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen, church. And let us take note, it talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Hang on, I thought there are nine. But why is it fruit? Then it's wrong grammar. No, my dear brothers and sisters. It's only singular, but bearing nine classifications because you cannot have one without having the eight and vice versa. Amen, church. But I know, my dear brothers and sisters, if you are lacking in one, if you are lacking in two, if you are not excelling in one, I'm not excelling on all of nine of them. But my dear brothers and sisters, cry. That's why the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in us ought to be the one to bear fruit, my dear brothers and sisters. The reason that we do not excel in them is we do not allow the Holy Spirit to bear fruit. The reason that sometimes we are so high up and sometimes we are so down low because, you know, we are the one trying to produce this fruit. And you are bound to fail if you do that. Let us, let the Holy Spirit change us. Amen. Amen, church. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to change us. Hallelujah. And you know, this fruit of the Holy Spirit, this is what you owe yourself. This fruit of the Holy Spirit, this is what you owe yourself. As a Christian, as a believer, 
someone who is called a Christian, someone who is called receive the newness of life. This is what is being manifested from you personally. Amen. But apart from the fruit of the Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters, we have already established that because we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, because we are not playing games, because we are not we are committed in our faith, that all of us receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. We all agree on that. Amen, church. So now what we are trying to seek, what we are trying, my dear brothers and sisters, to find out is allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal those fruits in us. Those fruit. Amen, church. But apart from the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is those fruit ought to be with you, with you, with you, with you, wherever you are seated in the room, all the believers ought to bear those nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. There should be no exemption. Amen, church. There should be no exemption. You should not say that, I know I'm not good in this area, I'm not good in this department. Maybe, but that's why you ask the Lord. That's why you ask the Lord, that's why you cry to the Lord. When was the last time you come to the Lord crying? When was the last time you come to the Lord crying? It is reasonable to cry to the Lord over a heartache, but it is so blessing, it is so blessed to come crying to the Lord because of that adoration. Try it. Amen. So there is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is expected to all the believers in Christ. And the other end, my dear brothers and sisters, we also have the so-called gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the reason why I said that the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that is what you owe yourself as a believer. That's what you owe yourself as a Christian. Amen. But the gift of the Holy Spirit, that is what you owe to the body of Christ. That is what you owe to the assembly of Christ. Because what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit giving His gifts. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says in there, the Holy Spirit give variation of gifts according to what He pleases for the common good, for the good of the body of Christ. Amen, church? Amen? So we also have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what is the gift of the Holy Spirit? The gift of the Holy Spirit, it helps us as a Christian, as a believer. It helps us to understand the role that we play within the body of Christ. Amen? God equips every Christian with the gift of the Holy Spirit to enable their devotion to God, to enable their relationship to God. Amen? For the purpose of building up the church of Christ. Amen, church? The fruit of the Holy Spirit, every single Christian should have all of them. Amen? Amen? The fruits of the Holy Spirit, it is given according to what the Holy Spirit desire. Amen, church? So although you probably want to have all those gifts of the Holy Spirit, chances is you probably won't have them all. Amen? Chances are you probably won't have them all. Amen, church. And again, I will put a caveat in here that here in this church, well, I mean, there's only one church, the body of Christ. But here at Christ is our rock church. We do not adhere to the doctrine 
doctrine of cessationism. We do not adhere to the doctrine of cessationism. Have you heard about that doctrine? Have you heard about that doctrine? The doctrine of cessationism says that the gift of the Holy Spirit have stopped during the apostolic age. Can you say that again louder? Not right. Not right. Amen. Again, as a believer, as a Christian, we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit and whatever standing situation that you have, you do not have to be someone we respect everyone. Amen. So we respect those people who adhere to the doctrine of cessationism, although it is not right, but as a church, we do not adhere to that doctrine. Because as a church, we are a full gospel church, meaning we adhere from cover to cover. As a full gospel church, we literally adhere to the word of God. In Hebrews, when he says that Jesus Christ never changed, he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen, church. Amen. We literally adhere to the word of God in Revelation chapter 22 and Deuteronomy when the Lord says, Never add nor never subtract anything that you like from this book. Amen, Amen church. <coughs> Even Jesus Christ said, Matthew 24. Heaven and earth will pass away. But nothing in this word, nothing in this book will pass away. The Lord said that every words that come out from him, he will make sure that they will serve their purposes. Amen, church. So here at Seor, we do not adhere to the doctrine of cessationism, which Patricia said that it is not right. We adhere, my dear brothers and sisters, we believe that the same gift of the Holy Spirit that were given to the believers before were given through the ages. Amen. For in God there is no partiality. Amen, church. Hallelujah. And what, uh, what did we say? That these gifts helps us to build his church that he has founded. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse uh, 1 to 11, it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, this is apostle, this is the Lord through Apostle Paul. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters. I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or others, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. Pay attention to this word because I'm going to go back to this at the end. I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one who can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of services, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now, 
To each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Amen. For what is beneficial for the common good. Common good meaning for the good of the body of Christ. For the good of the church that Christ founded within the track of testimony. Amen. To the one is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing Spirit or discernment. To another is speaking in different kind of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are work of one and the same Spirit, and take note, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! What is the purpose that the Holy Spirit give these gifts to the believers? It's for the common good. Amen. Common good to edify the body for the sake of the church. Amen, church. And in here, my dear brothers and sisters, no, it lay out different gifts. But there are more. We will look at them later on. Amen. And who are the recipient of this? Of course, Christian believer who bear the Holy Spirit in them. Amen. Amen. But how can we be recipient of this? It says in there that the Holy Spirit give it as He determines. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit give it to each one just as He determines. Amen. Amen. And if you want, list it. We're not gonna go for it because it's gonna be lengthy. In Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 8, it included additional gifts, prophecy, serving, teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, mercy. Amen? And if you go to 1 Corinthians at a later passage, 27 to 30, it included the apostle, the prophet, teachers, miracles, gift of healing, helping others, administration, tongues. In Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 3, it says in there, the gift of the Holy Spirit as wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude or might, knowledge, piety, devotion or delight in the Lord, and fear of the Lord. Amen. So my dear brother and sisters, no, it is very obvious and clear to see that there are many gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We do not know. There might be other things not listed in here that you are doing, that you are operating for the common good, for the service of the church. And if you are doing, you're operating within your heart, with all your mind, with all your understanding, I believe that that too can be a gift. Amen, church? That too can be a gift. But I don't know. I believe that every gift that being manifested at the moment can all be aligned with all this. There were words that were repeated, but I counted them. It's 30 plus. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, nine of them, every believer has to have them. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, chooses or determines in whom he will give for the edification of the body, for the common good. Amen, church? Amen. But according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, 
It says in here, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Especially the gift of prophecy, it says in there. Apostle Paul, the Lord through Apostle Paul exhorted us saying, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of the prophecy. Amen. Amen. Is the Bible telling us in here that the gift of the prophecy is only that matters and the 30 plus doesn't matter? That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying, there are probably more gifts in there. I only found 30. It is only saying, the Bible is saying that, you know what? Inasmuch as I, the Holy Spirit, give the gifts to people as I determine it, but it says in there, you can eagerly desire these 30 plus gifts, especially the gift of prophetic. And explain later on. But it did not say, my dear brothers and sisters, that prophecy only matters and the 30 plus is negated. No, no, no. If that is our understanding with that, then my dear brothers and sisters, glory to God that the Lord allow us to share this message today in order for our mind and understanding to be open. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. It says in there, now, my dear brothers and sisters, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Apostle Paul, regarding spiritual gifts, I don't want any of you to be ignorant. That's the reason why that the Lord allowed us. When does ignorance comes? Lack of knowledge. And the Lord says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. The unbelievers, they perish because they refuse to accept the Lord. They are not the people of God. They are the people of the dark. But Jesus said, my people, people who come to him, why is it that I came to you, Lord, but still I perish? Because of lack of knowledge. Because of ignorance. Amen, church. Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? what the Bible is trying to tell us in here is, there are 30 plus gifts and all these gifts are important for the common good. Amen. They are not obsolete, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. They have not become of no use. They have not become of an unfavorable situation. That's the belief of cessationism. But like what said, we do not adhere to that. Amen. And it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, no? That what is it that this passage is telling us? That yes, this passage is telling us that the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit that He gives according to what He desires. But what is the first sentence in there that it says? Follow the way of love. Do you understand that passage? Follow the way of love. What does that mean, my dear brothers and sisters? What does that mean? Follow the way of love and eagerly desire the spiritual gifts. What does that mean? What is the way of love? What is the way of love, my dear brothers and sisters? I hear a lot say, love, 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 but what is the way of love? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 11, let it be revealed to us what is the way of love. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. The one who seeks, find. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Amen. And this is the way of love. Pay attention. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give them a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, 
That is the way of love. Evil person or not, you have love in your heart. Amen. You know, you ask the most hardened criminal, what led you to do what you are doing? To feed my family. To provide for my loved ones. You know, in the Philippines, there is a saying that jail is not place for the hardened criminals. But in Tagalog, I don't know how to do it in English that it's gonna be mean, but in Tagalog, ito ay lugar ng mga taong kinapus ng kapalaran. Those people who fell short in their faith. Faith, F-A-T-E. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. That is the way of love. That though you are evil, you know how to give good gifts. Amen. So do not think, my dear brothers and sisters, that only you righteous know what love is. It says in there that if someone asks for bread, if your son asks for bread, you give them bread. If they ask fish, you give them fish. That is the way of love. And that is the way of love. The Lord said that follow the way of love. Eagerly desire the spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit according to what He pleases. But it says follow the way of love. Eagerly desire the spiritual gift. You can ask for these gifts. You can pray for these gifts. If those evil father knows how to show love by giving good gifts to their children, how much more me? If you ask and I will not give. Amen, church. So in here, what I want us to do is put us in the place in agreement whereby, yes, the gift of the Holy Spirit is given by the Holy Spirit according to as He determined. But you and me, my dear brothers and sisters, you can ask for these gifts. Because this gift is equivalent to service. This gift is equivalent to ministry. Amen. It does not mean that the more gift you have, that you are elevated, that you are praised. No. The more gift that you have, meaning you work harder and tighter. Amen. The more gift that you have, the more gift that you ask the Lord, the more gift that you want for the, the Holy Spirit to manifest in you, meaning because that is so much love in your heart. Amen, church. If you are contented to just to usher, if that's the grace that the Holy Spirit given you, have you seen? I've seen someone. They usher after everyone is there. They run to the kitchen serving. After serving, they come in here and exhort. My dear brothers and sisters, that's how that their love is, I mean, their heart is exuding with love. Amen. Because that is where the more spiritual gift that the Holy Spirit given as a grace to you, it's because your heart is capable for more love. Amen. The gift of the Holy Spirit is, is not something that you can, oh, no. That is service, my dear brothers and sisters. That is service. Amen. Hallelujah. So there are gifts of the Holy Spirit. And there's 30 plus gifts of the Holy Spirit can be accessible to everyone and anyone. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire them. Amen, church. Eagerly desire them. This afternoon, I want to highlight to us and teach you that is specific, pinag-usapan, we talked about it last two weeks ago. We're gonna be talking about this. This afternoon, I want to highlight and teach to you the Holy Spirit gift of speaking, of, speaking in tongues. The gift of tongues. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gift of tongues. Amen? 
And just as Apostle Paul in introduction, we know when Apostle Paul was teaching the Corinthians, Apostle Paul in verse, chapter 12 said that, People of Corinthians, I want to teach to you about the spiritual gifts because I don't want you to be ignorant about them. And like I say, the spiritual gifts, there are, we mentioned 30 plus, but this afternoon, I want to highlight the speaking in tongues. Amen. I want to highlight the speaking in tongues. My dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Amen. Tell your brother, your sister next to you, are you ready to listen? Amen. Amen. And just like Apostle Paul, I don't like, I don't want us to be uninformed. I don't want us not to understand the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the 32 plus gift, including the gift of tongues. Amen, church. Especially like what I've said, we have already uh, I, uh, stated enough that we do not adhere to the cessationist um, uh, uh, teaching. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, now the gift of tongue is the most controversial gift. The gift of tongue is the most controversial gift of all the gifts. Amen. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, my dear brothers and sisters, maybe few, one year ago, or maybe more than that, when uh, I met with, um, uh, I met with uh, fellow ministers, and uh, uh, when they found out that we believe, we still believe that the gift of the Holy Spirit is in operation today. You know the number one that they asked me? So do you speak in tongues then? They did not ask me, do you operate in knowledge? Do you operate in prophecy? Do you operate in serving? Do you operate in this? No, number one is, do you speak in tongues then? So that proves how controversial it is. Speaking in tongues is the most controversial of all the gifts, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. And I believe that the reason that why it is the most controversial gift is because according to Apostle Paul, there are so much ignorance surrounding it. There are so much ignorance surrounding it. Not many churches are preaching the gift of tongues. I personally, myself, I never remember growing up as a child, hearing the speaking in tongues being preached in the church. It is being mentioned, it is being outlined, but for it to be preached for understanding, I never remember. I mean, to be honest, we are no different. We are seven years, but I believe this is only the second time that we will share the speaking in tongues. How about you, my dear brothers and sisters? When was the last time you heard or you watched, you saw someone preaching about the speaking in tongues? Anyone? Anyone? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, even the charismatic and Pentecostal circle, they adhere to it, they practice it, they believe it, but not many of them preach the actual speaking in tongues. Like I say, you hear them a part of the message, but it was never the whole message, my dear brothers and sisters. So number one, num first, I want to define speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues, my dear brothers and sisters, is the compound Greek word glossolalia, compound pinagsama, glosso and lalia. Glosso, my dear brothers and sisters, is tongues or language. And lalia meaning to speak. Amen. 
So glossolalia, my dear brothers and sisters, is is speaking in other tongues, speaking in other language that is previously foreign to the speaker. Amen. So it's me for example. Because of the privilege of living in Israel for four years or so, I can speak in Hebrew. And when I speak in Hebrew, that's not speaking in tongues. Because I have already been previously learned that language. So my dear brothers and sisters, is speaking in tongues, is speaking in different tongues, is speaking in different language that is previously foreign to the speaker. It is not something that you learn. It is not something that you learn. It is an utterance that the Holy Spirit will give you. Amen. So Jesus himself, when giving the great commission, before he was taken into heaven, Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18, Jesus said to the believers, Go into all the world and do your job. And that is, proclaim the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. They will drink deadly poison and it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Amen, church. It says in here, go into all the world. Christ is all-knowing. Amen? If we adhere to the teaching of cessationists, he would have taught, told to these disciples, go to Asia Minor, go to Europe, and proclaim the good news. He speak in tongues, because after that, it will stop. When is the word of the Lord being preached in the whole world? Now. Now. Amen, church? Like what I have shared to all of you, my position about this social media, about this internet. Before social media, before internet, in order for those people in the remote area has to uh, hear the word of God, missionaries go to them. Americans, British, and other missionaries. And by doing so, before even succeeding, they die. It could either be harsh climate, it could either be the same people that they ought to evangelize. But it says in there, at the end of the day, everyone will stand into the throne of God. Judgment time. No one will stand in the throne of God, will say, Lord, I live in the remote mountains of Mongolia. I have not heard your gospel. The Lord will say, you have Facebook. You have Instagram. Surely, you would have read. Amen. So no one can deny. That's the reason why there is a positive about this internet and social media. Because of this. I mean, even the, uh, the Dalai Lama has a Facebook, has a fan page. Oh, it's, impo it's impossible. Amen. Even the Vatican has Facebook. So it's impossible that they do not hear the true unadulterated word of God. No one can deny. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, even Jesus Christ told to the believer, go into all the world. And according to my calendar, Jesus said, it's going to be the year 20th century. <laughs> Amen. So even now, the gifts are alive, including the gift of tongues. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, what I want to highlight really here is what are the uses or the different types of this gift? Glossolalia 
or speaking in tongues. What are the uses? What are the types of this gift? Amen. Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, pay attention because dito tayo, this is where we are being confused. This is not the first time that we talk about it. This is where we are being confused. Let us understand. There are four types or four uses of speaking in tongues according to the Bible. Not according to me. According to the Bible. Number one is the gift of tongues or the gift of language where the tongue was manifested as an actual foreign language. That's what happened in Acts chapter 2. Diba? That's what happened in Acts chapter 2. Let's quickly... That's the first uh, time that this promise gift manifested. The time of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of the wi violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to reach on each of them. Pay attention, verse 4. All of them, the word all of them, without the exemption of anyone, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all of these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, resident of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius in Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt in the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and convert to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs were hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Amen. So that is the first time where tongue was manifested, where the gift of tongue was manifested as an actual foreign language. Amen. It was manifested as an actual foreign language. Amen. They were all together in one room. And boom, it goes, my dear brothers and sisters. All of them spoke in tongues. The language was not understood by the speaker. Amen. But because it was a known language, it was understood by different people coming from different backgrounds. Amen. Again, for the benefit of the hearer. Amen. Church, pay attention. The speaking in tongues was actually manifested in an actual language. Therefore, it did not need interpretation. It did not need interpretation. Why do you need interpretation? They understood. Amen. Now the number one fatal question. Does every speaking in tongues needs to be interpreted? No. Because it was an actual foreign language, the people understood they did not need interpretation. Amen, church. Second, what happened? They were all together and boom, everyone were speaking in tongues. That's what the Bible says. So say for example, we are 50 in this room. 
And all of a sudden, boom, the Holy Spirit give us utterance, give us that speaking in tongues. And we all spoke in tongues according like the book of Acts. Do we need interpretation? No. Why do I need interpretation? I am busy speaking to God myself. And so are you and so are the rest of the 49 in this room. Does it need interpretation? No. Because each and every one of us are busy speaking ourselves with the Lord. Amen. So that is the first manifestation. That is the first type for first use of tongues. Where it did not need interpretation because it was in an actual foreign language, although it is not known to the speaker, but it was known to the hearer. Amen. It did not need interpretation because all of them were busy speaking in tongues. If I am busy speaking in tongues and you are busy speaking, all of us are busy speaking in tongues, I'm not gonna stop just to all of us are speaking in tongues. Amen, church. <coughs> Number two is the use of speaking in tongues is the gift of tongues that needs interpretation. When does the speaking in tongues, when does the gift of tongues needs interpretation? And sometimes, dito tayo nagkakamali. Sometimes this is the flow because what we know is every speaking in tongues needs interpretation. No, only in this situation where speaking in tongues needs interpretation, my dear brothers and sisters. The background of this is, in the church of Corinth, the people in there, as according to Apostle Paul, the people in there, they welcome all this gift of the Holy Spirit. That's why Apostle Paul said, My dear brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to be ignorant about the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because if you are from this church, and you went and joined their fellowship in the book of Corinth, you will be surprised because every one of them are speaking in tongues. You will feel like foreign. The church of Corinth, they all practice all these gifts, different gifts. That's why Apostle Paul in response said that, Oops, hang on, let's put an order. Hang on, let's put an order. Hang on, with regards to spiritual gift, let's put an order. Because seemingly, everyone is ta -ra 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 and ta -ra -ra -ra. That's why Apostle Paul said that, follow the way of love. Amen, church. Follow the way of love. This is where Apostle Paul give us 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Where, Majority of people, this is the only passage that they refer into. So they miss a lot with regards to speaking in tongues. Amen. And take note, my dear brothers and sisters, no? It says in there, follow the way of love and eagerly desire the spiritual gifts. Let's jump, my dear brothers and sisters, in the orderly worship so that we will not stay long. In verse 26, it says in there, What then shall we say, brothers, when you come together, everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All of this must be done for the strengthening of the church. If anyone speak in tongues, to or at most three would speak, one at a time, and someone must interpret. Again, what is the purpose of this speaking in tongues? What is, why does it need that someone must interpret? It says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, because all of this that we are doing, we are doing for the strengthening of the church. Amen. Let's read again. What shall we say, brothers? When you come together, when we come together in worship, everyone has a hymn 
Everyone has a word of instruction. Everyone has a revelation, a tongue or interpretation. What is the purpose of this? All of this must be done for the strengthening of the church. Amen. So if you operate in tongues with the intention to strengthen the church, then Apostle Paul says, by all means, you need an interpreter. Amen. Because your purpose is to strengthen the church. How can you strengthen the church if the church do not understand what you are saying? How can the church say amen if the church do not understand what you are saying? Amen? Do we agree? If you are speaking in town and say that you, the purpose is to strengthen the church, then Apostle Paul said that by all means, we need an interpreter. And when we say interpreter, my dear brothers and sisters, is the gift of revelation. Interpret. It did not say translate. This is where a lot of people, number two, say fatal flow. People thought that you must translate what is saying in tongues. No. What does translation means? If you say 10 sentences, the translation must be 10 sentences. And the gift of tongues is not like that. It's not translation. Interpret. And if you really say people who operate in the gift of prophetic interpretation, persons spoke in tongues, sometimes the interpretation are shortened. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is what I want us to understand. And I know and I do believe that there are people among you who has that gift of interpretation. It's just we are not confident. It's just natatakot tayo. You know, sometimes why is it that there is something that we want to say, but because we hold it back, that it's as if it's not good in us? Amen, church. The only time that the gift of tongue must be interpreted is for the purpose of, ano yung sabi natin? Amen. Amen. That's the time. Amen. That's the time that the tongue is interpreted. When we come together as a church and public, and it is for the purpose of strengthening my brother, my sister, the church. That's the time that, yes, Apostle Paul said, kailangan, we need an interpretation. Because if you, if you, if you do that, you take over the worship. And you disturb, distract everybody. And you cannot offer an interpretation. Then that's the time that Apostle Paul said that, step back, speak in tongues between you and the Lord. Amen, church. So that's the time that speaking in tongues must be interpreted. Amen. Now sometimes if someone is speaking in tongues, and why is it that after that, or some after that is, there is a burden in your heart, there is a burden in your mind, that there are words to say, don't hold back. Don't hold back. The Holy Spirit does not need to come to you and, oh, this is, we need to do the tick list. No, my dear brothers and sisters, we have all agreed that we are believers in Christ, that we are not playing game, that we receive the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that the, I receive is the same Holy Spirit that is in you. And you can manifest greater and higher according to as the Holy Spirit desire. Amen, church. Amen? Amen. Number four, use of tongue. 
tongue as a form of praise. Amen? Apostle Paul spoke of observing the gift of tongue as a prayer language. He also spoke about singing in tongues and praising God in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 15 to 16, it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, So what shall I say? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my mind. If you are praising God with your spirit, how can one who find himself among those who do not understand say Amen? Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. So there is that praying in the spirit, but there is as well tongue as a form of praise or singing in the spirit. Amen? No? Does this need interpretation? No. It says in there that you sing in the spirit, you sing also in your mind. Meaning you sing as well in intelligible language, but it did not say interpretation. Amen. So the gift of tongues, my dear brothers and sisters, can also be used as a form of praise, as a form of worship to the Lord. Amen, church. Amen. You know, many of us, I personally myself found that in praising and worshiping the Lord, it's good. It is good to praise the Lord or I adore you, but it brings a different level, my dear brothers and sisters, if you are enabled to sing in the Spirit as well. If you are being enabled to sing in the Spirit, let's sing a brand new song to the Lord. Amen, church. That is the reason why I'm gonna pick up the music team again. That's the reason why a reminder for us as a music team is more than the songs, more than the arrangement and accompaniment that we practice. We come and stand here in the front not to lead the congregation in singing songs. We are here to stand the congregation to lead them in worship. We are here to lead the congregation into that part, my dear brothers and sisters, no, according to the pattern of tabernacle of Moses, into that part of holy of holiest. Where everyone begin to praise in worship in the spirit. To praise in worship in mind. Meaning to praise in worship in intelligible word. I adore you. Come and sing praises to the Lord. You sing my dear brothers and sisters, that is horizontal worship. Because as you are singing, other people are encouraged as well. But you, when you arrive into that place of vertical worship, it is between you and the Lord directly. Between you and the Lord. Between you and the Lord. That is where we encourage people who led the praise in worship to give a space where there is that part of our worship, like we call a spontaneous worship or free worship where people are not restricted to the song that you practice you usher them in that place and let them be let us not rush my dear brothers and sisters amen let us not rush you are not here to lead the people in singing you are here to usher them into that place of worship Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, it says in there, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. It says in there, singing psalms. Again, like what I've said last time, psalms is the adverb of praise. To praise is to psalm. Amen. 
according to the pattern of the worship that we adhere to, a, a tabernacle of worship, it's very important for us to come first to praise the Lord. That's why to psalm, to praise the Lord. What was our song earlier? The first one? Sing unto the Lord a new song. What does praise mean, my dear brothers and sisters? A song of thanksgiving. That's why in other churches, they do not say praise in worship. They say worship. Why do we give emphasis that we praise in worship? Because the element of praise as well is important. Praise is to psalm. Praise is to psalm to sing thanksgiving to the Lord. That's why we start singing unto the Lord a new song. Praise, my dear brothers and sisters, is singing of thanksgiving what the Lord has done. Worship according to the servant earlier said that telling who the Lord is in your life. Amen. That's why for everyone's consumption, we put a distinction. Praise and worship. Everything, of course, is a worship even here as I stand. This is part of worship. But when we talk about singing, we give a distinction. Praise and worship. My wrong praise, my wrong worship. Because according to the pattern of tabernacle of Moses with worship, no one can reach to the Holy of Holies without first coming to the Lord with thanksgiving. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. Amen, church. Let us learn. Amen. So the fourth and last one is tongue as a prayer language. And if you did not appreciate everything that I have said about speaking in tongues, I pray that this last one will open our understanding and will allow us to actually recognize and realize how important is speaking in tongues to the life of a believer. You may be strong today in the Lord. You may be strong in faith in the Lord today. But my dear brothers and sisters, I encourage you, I urge you according to Apostle Paul, eagerly desire the gift. I encourage you, I pray by faith that after this fourth part, prayer as a, a tongue as a prayer language, I encourage that after that all of us are excited to say, Holy Spirit, I desire the gift of tongues as well. Fourth use of tongues, let us remind ourselves, number one is the tongue is manifested as a foreign or various language. Number two, tongues that needs interpretation that is for the consumption of the body of Christ. Number three is tongue as a form of praise. Number four, tongue as a prayer language. Amen, church? All of us can pray, amen? amen. All of us can pray. Therefore, we all have access to prayer. Amen, church. Remind me, what is prayer again? Prayer is communicating, talking with God. Amen, church. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, it says in here, For anyone who speak in tongues that not, does not speak to men but to God. Indeed, no one understand him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. Amen. So when you're speaking in tongues, you are speaking, praying directly to God. And no one can understand. Not even you. Don't pretend that you understand what you're saying. Because it says no one can understand. Amen. Not even the speaker can understand what he's saying. Amen, church. Amen. So, everyone uses this prayer language, praise to God. Amen. No one understand him. It's a heavenly language. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, if I speak in tongues of men, tongues of men meaning prophetic. If I speak in tongues of men, prophetic, but have not love, I am only a resounding 
symbol. Oh, sorry. Basa, let's repeat. If I speak in the tongue of men, prophetic, and of the tongue of angels. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh, I can speak the tongue of an angel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, but my dear brothers and sisters, it says in there, so it is not love versus speaking in tongues. Don't throw into a spanner that, oh, even I speak in tongues but I do not love. If you have doubt about your love, it is not love between speaking in tongues. It is about love between versus all the gifts. If you are not sure about your heart, if you are not sure about your love, then we're not only talking about speaking in tongues, the service that you do, the leading that you do, the faith that you profess in the Lord. If you are not sure about your heart, then it follows. Go back to basic. The faith that you profess in the Lord, is it true if you have doubt in your heart? So it is not about love versus speaking in tongues. It is about love versus all the 30 plus spiritual gifts. So it says in there, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, so my dear brothers and sisters, like I said, speaking in tongues is, is speaking directly to God. No one understands. Speaking in tongues is the heavenly language. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, it says in here, Anyone who speak in tongues edifies themselves. Amen. The one who prophesy edify the church. Anyone who speak in tongues edify themselves. What does edifying means? To lift up, to build up, to encourage, to instruct, to educate, to teach, to strengthen. Amen. Do we agree? When you prophesy, you strengthen the church. When you speak in tongues, you strengthen your own self. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. What does this mean? Why do I need to strengthen myself? Why do I need to strengthen myself? Why do I need to develop, to build up, to instruct, to edit, to educate, and to teach myself? Why? I have a question here. Do we all know the will of God? Anyone? Do we all know the will of God? Not completely. Amen. I know the will of God where God wants us to repent. I know the will of God where God wants us to accept His Son Jesus as our Lord and Savior. God wants us to propagate, meaning make disciples of all the nation, preach the good news, share the good news. God's will for us to undergo the process of baptism. God's will for us to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Nine of them. God will for us, although He has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, but it is in His will for us to eagerly desire this gift as well. Amen, church. So we know the will of God. Yes, of course, it is written in the Bible. Amen. But exactly, do we always know the will of God? No. Amen. Lord, shall I leave this workplace and transfer to the next? Do you know the will of God on that? Lord, shall I stop pursuing this person? Do you know the will of God in that? Lord, shall I take the, the, the Etihad flight or shall I take the other flight? Do you know the will of God in that? Anyone? God heal this person of their illness. God spare the life of this person. 
God, you ask us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God, do not allow war to happen. How many prayed for that? God, do not allow war in Israel to happen. How many prayed for that? I prayed for that. Did war happen or no? It happened. So I was praying against the will of God. <laughs> Amen. I was praying against the will of God because what happened? Amen, church? This is the time why do we have to ask the Lord for that gift of tongues manifested as a prayer language. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it says in here, this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He will answer us. Amen. I have 49 prayers that were answered. So I'm sure that those 49 pray times that I prayed, I was praying according to the will of God. But I have 51 prayers as well that were not answered. So it is clear and obvious to me that those 51 times that I was praying, it was not contrary to the will of God. It was contrary to the will of God. Amen. So it says in there that you have the confidence when you are praying that your prayer will be answered if you are praying according to the will of God. But how can you find that out? Because according to what we say, we, will, we do not always know the will of God is. In Apostle Paul taught us that we have an infirmity in us. What is infirmity? Weakness, illness, frailty, condition, inability, lack. Apostle Paul said that we have infirmity in us. Romans chapter 8, 26, 27. Likewise, the Holy Spirit helpeth us with our infirmities. Amen. Can you put that? Romans 8, 26 to 27. In the same way, the Spirit also joined to help us in our infirmity. That is HCSB. If your Bible is say HCSB, NIB, or any other translation, it says in their comma, it says in their period. But if you go to King James Version, it says in there, in the same way, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. There. And what is in there? Semicolon. When is, uh, I mean colon, when colon is being used, what is the purpose? The following statement explains the former statement. So it says, Apostle Paul, that likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. And what is this infirmity in here? The infirmity that says, do not rely on your own understanding. What is the infirmity in here? It says in there, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercession with us, with Groanings. With groanings. Amen, church. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to to the will of God. Amen. So this tells me that when I pray in words, I do not always know the will of God because I've got infirmity in me. 
But when the Holy Spirit enables me to pray, who knows the will of God if not the Holy Spirit? Amen, church. Amen. As an example, yes, I pray with my mind. If I'm praying for salvation, I pray with my mind. Because how can the person that I am praying for understand? Is there still a debate? Lord, is it your will for this person to be saved? Of course. It is the will of God for all men to be saved according to the Bible. Amen. So if I'm praying for salvation by all means, I pray in intelligible word so that the person that I am praying for understand. Amen, church. <coughs> Hello? Amen? Amen? If I am praying for food, anyone who will pray for food later, of course, they will pray an intelligible word so that people waiting to eat can understand. Amen? I tell you a scenario. When me and Marian went to see Mamshi in the nursing home during that last hours, in my mind and in my heart, what I want to pray is, Lord, strengthen, Lord, heal, Lord, miracle, Lord, let Mamshi stand up and walk again. That is in my heart. That is in my will. Is that in the will of God? 93-year-old woman, or is it the will of God to say, my daughter, come home? What is the will of God? Do I say, Lord, heal, miracle, da, da, da? No. That's why you pray as the Holy Spirit enable you to say what in par in the will of God. Amen, church. My will is for Mamshi, 93-year-old, to be a testimony, a testament, miracle, stand again, walk, healing. But the will of God is, my dear Irene, come home. Amen, church. It's important that when I pray in those situations, pray according to the Holy Spirit enables you. Amen. Lord, no war. No war, no war, no war. The Lord said, yes war, yes war, yes war, yes war. Because you know what's happening? Uh, 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 have you heard what's been happening, my dear brothers and sisters? In Gaza, since the war began, many Gazaeans surrender their life to the Lord. Many Gazaeans came to faith in the Lord. Amen. Even a single soul will be ushered into the kingdom of heaven. All heavens rejoicing. Amen, church. Amen. God did not mind to wipe out this world to save seven families for His will and purposes during the time of Noah. God do not mind, again, uh, it's going to be very sensitive, but I do not know how to say it, that it's not going to be sensitive. I believe that God do not mind, just as He has done in the Old Testament. War happened, but because of this war, hundreds of people came to the Lord. No war, no war, no war. The Lord said, yes, war, yes, war, yes, war. So I we say, pray in the Spirit. Because when you pray in the Spirit, you know that you are praying according to the will of God. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, uh, yes, I do apologize. No? But to uh, sum it up, my dear brothers and sisters, no? To end it up, again, I personally plea 
for all of us to continue to operate, continue to desire, eagerly desire the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church. And again, there is just so much power with this gift of tongues as well. That's the reason why if people ask me for prayer, especially for healing, it's a caveat that I ask your permission that I will pray in tongues as well. I will pray in tongues as well just because with that, that is the only way that I can, my spirit, the Holy Spirit can relate to the will of God. Amen. And praising and worshiping the Lord. Let us praise and worship the Lord in tongues. Let us not resent tongues. Let us welcome it because it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. If it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a question. Maybe it's fake. Maybe someone who is speaking in tongues is faking it. I tell you the truth, Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, he claimed to be the expert in tongues. He claimed to speak in tongues more than anyone. But you will never see Apostle Paul doubting or not believing in tongues. What Apostle Paul said is, let's put it into order. Amen. You know, Apostle Paul said, and we are done. It says in there, Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God, no one who is speaking in tongues says, Jesus be cursed. Amen. And no one who can say, no one can prophetically say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? Apostle Paul never doubted speaking in tongues. Apostle Paul never stopped nor forbid speaking in tongues. He never raised the issue of fakery. Why should we? Instead, let us pray to the Lord for the gift of interpretation. But Lord, I may interpret what this person is saying. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, we need to act in love. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 12, chapter 12. We are all part of the same body. Amen. If we do not have any other gifts, we must have to respect and show love to others who are exhibiting the gift that we do not have. Amen, church. So is with people who have the gifts. You must have as well. To put in mind, bear in mind the welfare of other people who do not have. That's the reason why Apostle Paul said, let us put into order. Amen? Let us stand up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Um, can I ask, are there people in here who who believe, who have operated in the gift of tongues? Anyone? Anyone? If you, can you please come in the front? Yeah? Anyone? Anyone? Please come in the front. <laughs> Praise you, Lord. Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, uh, people, people who have been, uh, who has, who is operating in the gift of tongues or who received the gift of tongues. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise. Praise, praise. No, no, face, face there. Here, face. Come, come. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Anyone else? Hallelujah. If there are the people, my dear brothers and sisters, are there anyone in the room? The word of the Lord said, eagerly desire the gift of tongues. Are there anyone in the room who is desiring? Who is desiring? Who oh, they have the full conviction that receiving the gift of tongues.
can benefit the church. Can benefit the church. Anyone, if there's anyone, come here, come here. If there's anyone, come here. We, I want these people to impart, to impart, to pray with you, to pray for you as well. Hallelujah. If you want to receive the gift, face this way. If you want to impart the gift, face that way. Hallelujah. Anyone else, my dear brothers and sisters? Hura mama si kia rabakandaray. Hiya rababa si kia rabasakandaray. Yes, somebody, can somebody pray for Chris? Hiya rababa si kia rabasakandaray. Hura mana na si kidi dia rabasakandaray. Hura baba bashi kidi dia rababa basakando do rababa kandaray. Hiya rama na si kia rabasakandaray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you go, you go and help. Uh, if there's no one else, you go and help pray for Chris. Hallelujah. Let's shall we pray for Sister Michelle? Hora baba shikidi dia rababa sakandaray. Hora baba shikidi dia rabakanda. You receive the Holy Spirit of God. You are marked with the Holy Spirit as a mark of ownership and a seal of what is to come. Let that Holy Spirit speak directly to God. Let that Holy Spirit directly to God. Let the Holy Spirit with His utterance speak. Hiya rama mama na shiki di di araba baba si kindi yura baba ba. Hiya rama mama na shiki di di baba si kindi yura baba ba. Hiya rama mama si ki yura baba ba si kindi yura baba ba kandarai. Hiya rama mama si ki yura baba ba Feel, O God. Feel, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, let my sister receive. The gift of tongues, O God, with the utterance that comes from you. Hora mama na si kia rababa sa kandu rababa. Receive, 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 receive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, eagerly desire, eagerly desire. Hiya ramana na si kia rababa kanduru. Kia ramana na si kia rababa basa kandia raha kandarai. Hiya ramana na si kia rababa sakandu dura baba kandarai. Hiya rababa basi kia rababa kandu dura baba kandarai. Hiya ramana na si kia rababa sakanda. Continue, continue to pray, continue to pray. Hiya rababa si kia rababa sakandarai. My dear brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be ignorant about this. Sometimes, you do not receive it immediately. But what I want you to do, especially for Christopher and for Sister Michelle, who desired for that gift, that as you go away, continue to eagerly desire. The word of the Holy Spirit said, eager. Continue to eagerly pursue. Continue to eagerly desire. Hallelujah. 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 Our Lord, Holy Spirit, we pray. We pray that you open the hearts of your people. We pray it is about you. It is about you more than about the tongue. It is about you, O Holy Spirit. It is not about the tongue. It is more than about you, O Holy Spirit. And Lord, thank you. Thank you. Because in this church, O God, for the common good, we desire that you may raise a people that can lead us, Father God, in worshiping in the Spirit as well. In worshiping in tongues as well. And praising in the Spirit as well. And praising in tongues as well. And praying in the Spirit, O Lord. And praying in tongues as well, O God. Lord, it is our will. It is our desire, O God. It is our longing, Lord, that make our joy complete. Father, by gracing this church, Lord,
with people, Father, who can operate in the Holy Spirit, with people who can operate in the supernatural, Father God, with people who can operate by the power of your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Sister, uh, Brother Chris, Sister Michelle, eagerly desire, even after this afternoon, eagerly pursue, eagerly desire. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you. We receive you in anticipation upon the life of our dearly beloved brother and sister, O God. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you so much that you have enabled us to talk in a lengthy way about the spiritual gifts. And this afternoon, we dwell about the gift of tongues. Uh, Father God, we pray that you give us opportunity to look at the other gifts as well. But Lord, meanwhile, we thank you so much that Lord, you have taught us this afternoon so that we will not be ignorant, Father God. So that we will not be put, Father God, in a compromising situation, O God. Because as you have, your word says that your people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Lord Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you and thank you. Thank you for the life of Sister Michelle and Brother Chris who desire, Lord, it is now your work. Empower their heart, fire their heart, passion their heart to eagerly desire, O God, the gift of tongues. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. Father, we pray. We pray that you continue to join us as we continue our extended fellowship elsewhere, O Lord. And for everyone, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you, Lord. May God bless you all. Hallelujah.